This is Skip from the Widescreen Gaming Forum, and today we're going to look at a review refresh of the AMD A10 7870K APU. Today's review is brought to you by Excel Cables, the makers of high-quality DisplayPort cables, adapters, and MST hubs. After spending hundreds of dollars on your displays and your GPU, ensure you're connecting them together with high-quality Excel cables. For anybody that's been following the channel or the site, it's, it, it's no surprise that I'm a fan of the APUs that AMD has developed. Um, I've done testing and benchmarking all the way back uh, from the A10 5800K. I've been collecting all this data for a while, but have never taken the time to put it all together to see you know, how these APUs have evolved over time, um, where the ecosystem is at today, just to really dive a little deeper into how they perform. So the first thing to do is to look at the uh, test system settings. Um, a key component of any APU system is the uh, main system memory speed, what the APU uses for its graphics buffer. Uh, there's a pretty decent bump in the GPU clock speed between the 7850 and the 7870, but a lot of the big performance gains come with the 2400 megahertz RAM. I did try overclocking uh, the 7870. I'd seen some other folks' reviews in the past that got it up to like 1,020 megahertz. Um, I could get it there, but it wasn't stable, even with the water cooler that I had on it. Um, and I figured it must have been something with motherboard stability or BIOSes or voltage or something. And honestly, I just didn't want to jack around with it. I don't have the time or the inclination to do that kind of tweaking. And really, that's why I started the WSGF, is that I didn't want to have to mess around with, with games if I didn't have to. Um, and I don't want to have to mess around with my hardware if I don't have to. Uh, once it's installed and set, I like to just let it go and use it and enjoy it. So if we look at some other key system specs for the A10 7870K build, again, it's in that Graphite 380T case with the Corsair H55 Quiet closed loop cooler running an RM650 modular PSU. Uh, it seems obviously an overkill for the PSU on this. Anything under 40% load, the PSU is silent, so it's a really quiet rig running an ASRock Mini ITX motherboard and the G-Skill Sniper Series RAM at 2400 megahertz. I did a bit of stress testing to look at power draw and temp, running the Valley demo, ran it for about a half hour. Idle power draw at the Windows desktop was only 35 watts and the benchmark power draw was only 97 watts. The ambient noise in my office was 41 decibels, but fully running, it is only uh, 41.7 decibels. You know, relatively quiet, especially considering the, the ambient noise and what it's like in just a, a general household. So when we look at benchmarking, the first thing I'm gonna do is touch on things that um, I didn't benchmark or didn't look at. And those are things that have really been hashed over a lot and sort of an established fact. Everything at the top of the Twitch TV list, whether it's Dota 2, League of Legends, CSGO, uh, the AMD, APU works really well on that, and I didn't feel the need to retread that ground. Uh, so I skipped over that and looked at some of the other titles that I've been playing with the kids or uh, been playing myself, and uh, we will look at those now. So the first set is Lego Batman 2, and then Rocksmith, and uh, Torchlight 2. You can see we're multi-generational here going back to the 5800K. You can see some big solid increases between the 6800K and the 7000 series. Pretty much everything is at or above uh, 60 frames per second. And with the 78, 70K on uh, Lego Batman 2 and uh, Rocksmith, your minimums are above 60 frames per second as well. So really solid performance here. And the minimums on Torchlight are above 30 frames per second. So all three of these titles are great contenders for use on the APU. Jumping into another pair of titles, looking at Dirt Showdown, that's the Destruction Derby entry into the series. On high, we are uh, hitting averages of 42 frames per second on the 7870 with minimums at 35. So again, a really good performer. Ultra is not gonna uh, make it here on the APU. And if you wanted higher frame rates, you know, there's a few things you could tweak down towards the medium settings. I mean, probably hit 60 frames per second if you wanted. Now, the big surprise here is that Sonic Generations is a resource hog. I don't know what Sega did. I don't know if they programmed it in Java or something but the game is absolutely not attractive enough to need the horsepower it does. And, and the game really just runs like a dog. You're not running 60, 60 frames per second. Um, you really can't enjoy a Sonic the Hedgehog game. So, you know, just skip that one on the APU. I also wanted to look at, you know, how well the APU does on some AAA titles. Uh, by this point in time, these are, you know, some older titles. They're not at top of mind for everybody, though they do still pop up in benchmarks and reviews here and there. 
You can see as we go left to right that there's a pretty sizable uh, performance increase with the 7870. On both low and medium, your averages are above 30 frames per second, though your minimums don't quite uh, get there. From that 10 to 12 foot distance in a living room, you know, low or medium or somewhere in between may be an acceptable scenario and performance for somebody. Looking at uh, Hitman Absolution, um, the APU is not going to cut it for this title. Even on low, we don't hit 30 frames per second, so uh, we can toss that one out and move on. And so we move on to Sleeping Dogs, which training your eye to the far right for the 7870K. One thing you'll notice is that between low and medium, there is really minimal difference in the performance hit. We only lose a frame and a half on the average, and, and the medium hits right at like 34 frames a second, so you're solidly above 30. You know, I would consider this good performance for this new of a title, this recent of a title, you know, just running natively on the APU. And then the last one that I looked at here was Tomb Raider. On the 7870 on low, you actually average 50 frames per second with minimums at 40, but low is just really low quality. The textures are big and blocky, and it's not something that a lot of people are going to enjoy. On medium, you're above 30 frames per second at your minimum and on your average. So there may be a happy medium somewhere where you can make a few tweaks, push those minimums up a little bit and get your average above 40. So before we end, um, the other thing I'd, I decided to take a look at is, you know, how does the 7870 function as a CPU? So I, I threw the biggest GPU added I had, which is AMD uh, Fury X, ran it on ultra wide 3440 by 1440. And looking at The Witcher 3, which is not kind to Radeon GPUs in general, you can see that the, the average does dip uh, noticeably from the FX 9590, but it's still above 60 frames per second. Where it, it becomes problematic is the real significant dip um, on the minimums from above 60 frames per second down to uh, just above 40 frames per second. This is in the village or town areas where you've got lots of people, the AI is tracking lots of things, people are talking to you. So that's that's not quick action places, and so it might not be something that, that you notice quite as much, but it is something to keep into account. On the Witcher 3 high settings, and again, this is high graphics paired with high uh, post-processing and you know previously medium paired with medium post-processing. Our averages are right the same. There is a small degradation on the minimums, uh, but it's not near the drastic drop we saw on medium. Looking at the Valley demo, which I ran at high and four uh, times anti-aliasing, your minimums and your averages are right there with each other, but you see this big difference on the max. Now, I wouldn't put too much stock in that because there's one scene where it fades in from a black background and the frames per second shoots up to 105, 108 frames per second, and that's really not indicative of anything you know, fading in from a black background. I still say the 7870 is highly recommended. And now when we get into more of the why I think it's highly recommended, you know, it's cheap, it's power efficient. The, the chip by itself you can get for about $130, $140 on Newegg. And I actually saw a bundle um, here just this week with a motherboard and 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance 2400 megahertz RAM for less than $250. I mean, that's a great starting point for a good performing um, entry into the PC platform. It's power efficient. Uh, the whole thing ran at less than 100 watts, and so you don't need other super high-end components to pair with it. Um, it's great for those home theater, PC, living room, and mainstream games uh, that I talked about, so the things that I'm playing with my kids and the things that seemingly everybody else is playing and looking at on Twitch, the APU is going to work great for those. And it's a good solid upgrade path to add a mid-range GPU later, at the time I did this testing, it would have been something like an R9-285. Now you're looking at like an R9-380 maybe. Sort of a, a neutral, not a positive or negative, is that you can get 30 frames per second. It's some older AAA titles on medium settings, and, and I consider it sort of the icing on the cake or if, sort of the lanyard for anybody that is familiar with that Cajun phrase. On the negative side, it's not going to handle newer AAA titles, um, and it's not as powerful as a single-purpose CPU. Uh, particularly for media encoding, media creation and stuff. But when you're looking at media consumption, playing videos, playing games, th there's really not much better at this price point than the AMD A10 7870K APU, uh, which is still highly recommended uh, from us here at the WSGF.